On a crisp autumn night in Richmond, Kentucky, where the moon cast a spectral glow and the wind whispered through the falling leaves, a tale of vengeance and ghostly justice unfolded. John Vickers, a man of imposing stature and brutish demeanor, roamed the streets, his mind clouded with dark intent. Recently widowed, John was known more for his love of the bottle than the sweat of labor. His wife, Connie, had been the gem of the community, a dedicated nurse, a selfless volunteer, beloved by all. Yet behind closed doors, she endured John's neglect and infidelity, forgiving him time and again, even when it cost her bruises and tears. Connie's death had been sudden and suspicious, a tragic fall in the shower while John lay in a drunken stupor. Though whispers of foul play swirled, nothing could be proven. At her funeral, John's disdain for the mourners was palpable. He saw himself as the victim of Connie's smothering love, a love that seemed to haunt him even in death. Fed up with the condemning stares of the townsfolk, John decided to sever his ties with Connie once and for all. Staggering into the graveyard, shovel in hand, he intended to desecrate her grave, to rid himself of her memory in a twisted act of defiance. As he dug into the earth, the night air grew colder, and an eerie stillness fell over the cemetery. Upon opening the casket, he found it empty, save for a chilling note. The dead have their justice and their laws are absolute. Fear gripped John as he turned to flee, only to be confronted by Connie's ghostly apparition. Her eyes glowed with an ethereal light, her presence a spectral embodiment of her suffering and desire for vengeance. In a moment of terror and revelation, John understood the gravity of his actions. Connie's spirit, fueled by the injustices she endured, exacted her final retribution. With a supernatural force, she drew John into an embrace from the grave, a macabre union of their tormented past. At dawn, the town discovered John's lifeless body in the cemetery, entwined in the arms of Connie's corpse, a look of utter horror frozen on his face. And so, in this world, injustices may sometimes go unpunished, but beyond the veil, in the realm of spirits, the laws of the dead are absolute, their judgments final. In the end, the arms that once offered love and forgiveness became the instruments of a ghostly and eternal justice. Thank you and good night. In the shadow of Waverly Hills Sanatorium, where whispers of the past cling to the crumbling walls, Dr. Emily Stanton sought to connect with the legacy of her great-aunt, Nurse Agatha Stanton. To Emily, Agatha was a paragon of virtue, a saintly figure who tended to the afflicted during the sanatorium's darkest days. On a dare, Emily and her friends embarked on a haunted tour of the sanatorium. As they delved into the depths of the decaying halls, Emily was separated from her group enveloped by the suffocating darkness of Waverly Hills' infamous body chute. As the night progressed, the spirits of the sanatorium began to stir, drawn to the bloodline of one they knew all too well. Emily, wandering alone, was confronted by ghostly apparitions, each a tormented soul who had once suffered under the care of Nurse Agatha. The chilling truth began to unravel. Agatha was no saint, but a harbinger of pain and death. The spirits swirled around Emily, a maelstrom of anguish and vengeance. As dawn approached, her friends found her, but it was too late. Emily lay lifeless, her eyes wide with an eternal horror. And now, the rest of the story. Emily Stanton, though innocent of her great-aunt's sins, had become a prisoner of Waverly Hills, bound to atone for Agatha's cruelty. In death, she was condemned to tend to the insane souls, an eternal nurse in the afterlife's twisted sanatorium. It was said that the sins of the parents become the sins of the children, and so the cycle continued. In the hereafter, Emily's duty was unending, to care for those lost souls, a dark atonement for a sin not her own. Her spirit, once vibrant and hopeful, now wandered the halls of Waverly Hills, forever a part of its haunted legacy. And so it goes, a reminder that in the realm of spirits, justice has a way of reaching beyond the grave, ensnaring the innocent in the chains of the past. 
In Waverly Hills, the line between the sinner and the sinned against blurs, each soul intertwined in an eternal dance of retribution and remorse. And now you know. If the shadows whispered secrets to you tonight, let us know in the comments below. Like, share, and subscribe to join our ghostly gathering. What haunts your sleep? Share your tales, and they might just be our next eerie adventure. Until then, keep a candle burning.